Yeah, thanks so much, Melody, for having me. Um, I wanted to talk about, you know, when she asked me to present in a Max meetup, I was like, you know, going through all of these pieces I've done over the years and found like a common thread that I often use Max to interface with hardware web applications um, and you know, also building instruments and processes and stuff. But I thought it was an interesting um, approach, you know, um, it's be, and Viola, I'm like totally into all that kind of stuff as well. And Letitia's work, who I, who was very inspirational to me when I was at Mills early, when I first was introduced to Max and the Lady Glove and everything. So, I feel like that's a really powerful part of this software. So I just wanted to share a couple of patches um, and keep it max focus. But if anybody has questions about the peripherals of all of this in the breakout room or any other time, I'm happy to, to take time. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just share um, kind of just a couple patches and how I, you know, what the idea was to build them. Um, we should. Can everybody see this patch? Okay, cool. Um, so this first one is a um, wiring a MIDI controller, in this case, um, a wireless MIDI controller, the nano control, to a C sound patch or a C sound code and outputting this C sound code as control voltage to, in this case, for demos, uh, just this little Volca modular. So there's um, hardware, MIDI hardware to max patch to C sound to, cert, you know, synthesizer or any circuit really. But um, I've kind of found over the years that I have just kind of templated um how to you know get my midi controller in and you know just have these sub patches that i can pull from past work and just not have to worry about that so my yeah midi routes and this is kind of programmed to be uh the, the firmware on or the the assignments on this are programmed to be kind of useful for all of my patches i keep it consistent so I don't have to go, especially now because uh, the new Mac OS does not support the Korg editor. So you, I'm glad I <laughs> planned ahead because um, I can't reassign it. So thanks, Apple. Um, but, or Korg, I don't know who, the combo deal. But yeah, so I have um, just these sliders hooked up into this Max patch. And um, what I have is... Um, in C sound, uh, this is a, the, I don't know if, if you're familiar with the work of Vianis Zanakis, his Gendi algorithm that he first developed in the seventies and worked, um, it's a, it's a stochastic sound generation, like sound wave generation algorithm that, yeah, first developed in the seventies and worked on in a number of pieces and then kind of thrown by the wayside until the late 80s when he re rebooted it and made some pretty compelling uh, tape pieces with um, with this algorithm. And I found, um, so all the, the, the here's a C sound, um, it's a C sound uh, Ugen, I guess it would be, I think that's what they call them in C sound. Um, that I did not write, but I was like, well, how cool would it be instead of doing, I guess what Zanakis did was program these parameters ahead of time or over time, and then sort of let the computer do its thing, controlling these in real time with a, a MIDI controller. So um, we can spend all afternoon diving into the, the, to the guts of this, but basically there's, um, about eight different parameters uh, controlling this sound wave shape. And I found that you can uh, embed with the C sound object 
code directly into it. So into max. So C sound in this case is the sound generator. It still uses Max's synth engine. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure. Um, but C sound is defining the, the, um, sound. So I found, you know, as somebody who does coding as well, I've also, f I felt like the trickiest part of Max for me was sound generation or, or synthesis in Max alone, but combining these two, be it C sound, um, web audio at one point, super collider. I thought it was, you know, I wanted to take the strengths of Max as like an interface tool, but work on the sound somewhere else. And, um, so I've, you know, I, that, that was kind of the approach here. And then what this is actually doing this, I have a patch that plays the sound as is, but in this case, I've actually scaled it down to be uh, used for control voltage, which can then be interfaced to any sort of Arduino, modular synthesizer, handmade circuit, um, what have you. And I did have like a little um, circuit made uh, that I made a long time ago. I was going to share for this, but it didn't. It didn't work, of course. So I'm using the Korg instead. Um, and so what you can do is. Uh, or what I I did was created this sub patch that takes these MIDI messages and then just throws them. You can assign, you know, you just define your sound block in C sound, and then here are your arguments, and then everything else is done in Max. If you've hooked a MIDI controller up to a a, a, a patch in C sound alone, it's much more complicated, and it's you know, it, it's, it depends on, I guess, your flavor of music making and code, but interfacing in code to me is strange, but sound generation is much more, is much easier. I don't know why, but, um, so y what we eventually have is this, I'll turn on the cord. All I have, this is running into an oscillator and then out on the cord, so it's a very rugged demo, but I can control the parameters of this algorithm and throw them directly into the cord. Um, So it's a very, very noisy patch. Um, if you um, hear, I, I believe it was Xenox's last published tape piece, um, S709, it's very noisy. Um, but uh, here, there are some hardware considerations for, you know, taking this signal out of Max and through a, a proper interface to send direct signal. Um, which I'm happy to discuss um, in the breakout room or, or point to references or where I've written about it. But yeah, it's it's sort of, I thought this patch was a fun one. And basically, um, I've just duplicated this, I don't know, s in six different ways. Uh, and this was originally meant uh, pa patching these into different parameters of a modular synthesizer, the oscillator frequency, uh, modulation depths, filter parameters and kind of using the um, 
kind of you kind of exploring this idea which i've s since rehashed uh on using old synthesis techniques or or established synthesis techniques uh and adapting them for modern purposes so how can we take Xenakis's algorithm which was very uh definitively Xenakis's sound but use it for something else that's new and something refreshing and sort of aim to establish a um call it a a, a practice of elect or a theory i don't know a, a, a canon for electronic music that's a little more codified so um yeah midi to max to c sound to control voltage very rugged but that's all there if anybody's I'm interested in 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 that setup. Um, the second one I wanted to share was a an interface with the web um, in a very non um, non web way, I suppose. So now, as we know, uh, Max has and has uh, had. Uh, great support with, with Max 8, uh, Max for Node or Node for Max is a very, um, very awesome thing. And I was really into it. I am really into it. And then I found, I started thinking about a different way to, um, how could I, how do I say this? Like, how can I interface the web without all of this extra stuff? Um, or extra work or whatever. So I start actually a fr friend of uh, Melody and I's uh, Hank Mason, um, his work with uh, 14 bit MIDI and Max was really the centerpiece of like the inspiration for me to explore this idea and how to send data from the web to wherever it needs to go. So this next bit um so i created a this was a piece i shared at seamus um uh earlier this year and what this is is that it's a it's an app um also midi broadcaster uh um is another one is that you could send midi messages over web sockets so what i have here is a page that has sliders on it anybody could actually go to this page um and oh i don't think it loaded properly great anybody could actually go to this page and do what i'm about to do um and what it's what it is is these sliders on this website are hooked up to a uh, they're just html sliders and behind the scenes there's the web audio api um, which is standard in uh, any chrome firefox browser i don't know if safari is supported yet but i was like well it, midi's just data anyways and i always found a limitation there's a beauty about midi that's very western and I always found the limitation was like this zero to 127 when you're dealing with uh, steady signals, you can hear the steps um, and on and on. And then I saw what Hank was doing with uh, his work with Max and hooking it up to an old Korg Electribe and, and hacking into the, the non-registered parameter numbers, which is basically that's it's basically a, a high def midi or parts of uh, that's all like factory specific or device specific and he was creating this map for the korg and doing these processes um of generating midi on the computer and then the drum machine was um was the sound source so i was like well if we have the web midi api how do, why don't we take a slider that's zero to 16383 value and break this up into two control uh, control channels, send them at the same time and then 
put them back together in Max and what we have, um, let's see if it's, what we have is the slider is able to send, while sending MIDI data is sending a much more defined, uh, a, a much larger range and a much more defined range. So it, it's, uh, it's also, let me see if it's working on my phone. Yeah, so even on my phone, I'm just on the site. That's kind of a separate thing, but um, this MIDI, MIDI is all hooked up to a server and sending through WebSockets. So if anybody actually goes, if you want to this site, I can kick it in the chat and um, move that slider. Just the first one is wired up for now, I think. Nope, they're all wired up. Um, that is controlling, again, this Korg oscillator, the first one. So what I had was this, again, as you could see from the labels, I had this hooked into various patch points on a synthesizer. And, you know, was, the idea was how do we use live streaming to be a little more or less live streamy or like just broadcasting. It's like, here's a website you, you know, as the audience can go and determine my parameters. And all I could do is either unplug you from the system or or change the, you know, um, scalability where at applicable. So, um, I, this is like also going to continue to live audience because it works on mobile and it's like, Hey, go on your phone and you can, you know, it's, a, it's I guess a large improv and working on, you know, during the performance, these faders would slide in and out. So it was a bit different for everybody. Um, but the, the meat and potatoes of it was, um, and if I can dig it in this code here, was uh, this sending of, let me see if I could find it, this here, of um, sending this 14-bit MIDI and doing something I really didn't do much of before. Um, here it is right here is the function. So you have two channels, 38 and six, and you send zero one twenty seven. It does this sort of operation of, you know, moving the bits themselves. And then back in max, it's this expression, uh, right here, um, which this kind of cracked open a whole world for me of the expression object. And this is like, I think where my future of Max work lies is like um, being able to really understand this object, parse the data, um, parse, you know, parsing the data and or whatever. Um, you know, I know I think Miller Puckett was really into is really into this with pure data. It's just like make a whole expression or algorithm that's doing everything and then just kind of throw your parameters into it. So, um, again, I'm happy, uh, to share any of this, um, um, go into any of the peripheral stuff about the hardware, um, about the web, about, I'm C sound. I'm a little rusty, a lot rusty on, but I'm happy to talk about C sound. If any, if anyone, I mean, I feel like if you're into talking about it, you probably know more about it than me anyway. So, <laughs> um, uh, and yeah, so that's, the, I, that's, I think, um, that's my, my, my presentation of pieces. Thank you again, Melody, for uh, inviting me. Today I'm gonna talk about, uh, I guess, my art and music practice, um, which is focused on mostly uh, designing interfaces for performance um, and yeah so I these are sort of three spheres um, 
of music making that I use Max for, my original music um, as Axine M, which is, I don't really use Max as of right now, um, but I've been making original music, electronic music, in like various projects for like 10 years. Um, I'll occasionally use Max for like, an, like a Max for Live device or to do sound design or something. Um, I also design uh, controllers and devices for third parties, and I do some music interface research uh, related to my studies at, at NYU, and yeah, hopefully more of that in the future. Um, and mo most of the, the research that I've done, well, the, the only research I've really done, I've just published some papers about uh, mapping strategies uh, for digital musical instruments, and uh, I'll talk some more about that. Um, so I'm like a really non-sequential thinker, a totally visual thinker. So Max and Pure Data, like graphical programming kind of like really keeps me in the game. Um, yeah, like I, this is a really uh, kind of boring patch. I'm just synchronized. Well, maybe not boring to everyone, but for me, I was really bored. So this is a, a patch to synchronize video and sensor data and and record it and play it back so, and um, yeah it's just kind of the the visual element like helps me focus and concentrate and uh, makes problems more interesting for me to work with um, this is some some little examples of um, sound generation and some kind of controllers that I've done um, this is this is a uh, on the right here is I'll play the video but um, this is a multi effects uh, patch for controlled by the leap motion infrared camera um, so I'll have I think I used some like built in gen effects and what I separated the leap motion into quadrants um, and would like turn on different effects with the quadrants and the effect is controlled by palm position from the lead motion and I use the the max externals by Jules from Francois I think that's how you say his name but yeah here <laughs> This video on the left is from uh, my thesis research, which was um, about designing a sort of a way to automate mapping strategies so that a performer could, could use many ge uh, gesture vocabularies to generate sound. And this is my friend Sam um, <laughs> playing a fidget spinner in, in a basement somewhere. It's pretty dark. Yeah, so um, there's this really, well, Perry Cook gives this advice in principles for designing computer music controllers where he says you should make a piece, not an instrument, and then like that the architecture and the functionality of the instrument would then be informed by the piece as opposed to just directly designing a controller, which is super good advice that I don't follow. <laughs> um, I definitely will like workshop making instruments by making pieces and like make many different pieces for an interface, but I, I tend to um, kind of approach the problem by saying like what kind of control um, can I apply to all these different kinds of performances that I'm thinking of? Um, or, you know, de design like a control system for the largest common denominator. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been thinking a lot about um, designing systems to accommodate like a whole, a huge family of interactions. Um, and then, yeah, just making the code as, as concise as possible just to solve that. Um, and so that kind of manifests as my thesis project, um, which I just defended like right before isolation began. Um, and so it's called experimentality and it's about hacking 
pre-existing gesture vocabularies, specifically object manipulating gestures as performative music control movements. I mean, if anyone, I mean, I think there are many, many fascinating um, gestural vocabulary, vocabularies that are not really, I, I just think they're, that there's so, there's so much, there's such a like vast, ripe, interesting, you know, world of gestural interaction that could control sound that currently isn't, or like I haven't seen it. So I, I'm trying to do that. Um, you know, I've, I've, I think lots of people have like watched YouTube videos or TikToks of like someone making cotton candy or like, you know, just doing something that they're really skilled at. Like, I don't think it matters what it is. Like experiencing someone controlling something really skillfully is, is interesting. Just, it, it just is for whatever reason. Um, so in order to try and workshop that and explore that, um, I made a max, a max patch for automate, auto mapping the relationship, automating the, automating, sorry, I'm combining the word, automating the mapping strategy um, between, or the mapping scheme between the gesture and the sound production. Um, this is the, face of that patch. Also, yeah, an another visual thing is that the uh, performance mode, or is it presentation mode, I forget what it's called, um, element of Max is so powerful and cool. And I don't, there's so, there's like no other programming environments where you can just like press a button and you have a GUI. It's like so great. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like. There's um, some pre-processing and clustering. Um, elements for many streams of the Mayo armband. And then um, I'm comparing those input streams to like uh, sequenced audio that's been downsampled to uh, match the, the data rate of the armband. And then those uh, relationships de determine the MIDI routing. Um, this is kind of what that that is like. Um, so I did some feature extraction, time time domain feature extraction, so that it's synchronous. And then I'm there's MIDI output, which you could hear in this video. Um, the MIDI out MIDI output is from a Waldorf Blofeld, uh, which is a really cool synthesizer. Um, yeah, the features I used are the number of peaks and onsets. Uh, first order difference, zero crossings, max, median, and mean. And those are from uh, prosthetic control research and some research from Atau Tanaka, uh, I think from the Mayo mapper. Um, but they, I think I implemented them, if I can read this one, you see any objects. Um, the, yeah, there's some like MIR external package, like ZL descriptors or something, but it's a really powerful uh, set of externals for feature extraction. And yeah, this is the routing. And it was, I would say um, it was tough working with matrices in Max, which is I, for, for me, because I wanted to visualize it um, I use a jitter matrix to look at the data, the training data, um, but I probably would not do that again in math because um, it was, yeah, a lot of, lot of stuff like this with many patch cables going to packing and unpacking them. Yeah, so I have these two papers about um, experimentality and I'm presenting one next week at ITMC, which I'm very excited about and I, maybe someone's coming. Um, yeah, so another project I've done is um, this like wavetable sampler uh, from my friend Madeline, who performs as a tent. Um, so she had this kind of dream wavetable synth idea. Um, and so I just took like all the features that she asked for and, and we made this sampler. It's not really a wavetable synth because of the max like I haven't implemented the gen element of it yet, but I am excited to have um, 
signal rate and then max rate, you know, like expanded. I suppose you could do it all in gen, but the, the kind of uh, nuances of the, of the, you know, the changing parameters and stuff are, they sound a little bit different um, when you're working um, at a much slower rate than 44K. Um, yeah, so it sounds pretty interesting. I have a video, or I mean, I think it sounds interesting. I have a video. I'm going to pull it up right now. Um, yeah, so it's designed to be controlled by the Octotrack, uh, which Madeline and I both use in original music. So here's what it sounds like. Sorry, Wi-Fi. audible over the outside noise. Um, yeah, so each each one of um, the, the interface that you see is just one of eight voices. And um, I have just duplicated that voice. And it's running through a B patcher. So the tab object will just like move the, the visual of the B patcher. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, another, um, this is maybe the thing I use most frequently in original music, it's uh, just an amp amplitude modulation device um, that also uses the, the GUI thing um, through a B patcher so I can have stereo amp modulation with the same controls. Um, and I get a lot of use out of that. I found it really, yeah. I, I get a lot of use out of this out of this Max for Life device. Um, it was kind of this is the guts of it, and then this is the actual sound generation. Um, basically, I'm just choosing a lot of cho choosing between different oscillators and or different waveforms to to choose an oscillator and then. There's some frequency modulation. Um, this is a this is a performance I did. Um, a wall control system I designed uh, with the Leap Motion camera um, in order to be able to perform with Cat's Cradle, which is a string game. Um, and so basically, I trained it with the Wekinator, and each stage of the Cat's Cradle. Um, is classified and then um, controls audio processing where like um, a new each each step of the game would um, trigger a new arpeggio that will affect the input audio um, and the arpeggios are constantly changed by data directly from the cat's brain. so like a different a different part of the hand would be uh, assigned to one of the arpeggios and then each stage you go to the um, yeah, I also have some video.
Okay, yeah. Um, so that's my presentation. Thank you, everyone, for listening.